it sounds a little bit silly, unfortunately, <laughs> when we say that. If you want to know the truth, then you have to listen to this, because this is the truth. So, we should modify ourselves from time to time and say that, you know, I have found this to be a huge discovery. The autonomic nervous system, the nervous system inside of us that we cannot see, is that which produces everything else that we can see. The hidden, unseen, invisible nervous system inside of us is that which produces everything else that comes to us in this life. Well, I just made a talk, and in the talk it sounds a little bit silly when I say that, you know, if you really want to know, <laughs> if you really want to understand yourself, if you want to understand the human being, if you want to know why things are as they are, why we live as we live, why we have behavior as we have, why the certain mental activities play out in the way that they do, and why society even grows into the structure and the building and the system that it grows into. If you want to know the underlying hidden reasons for this, well, it's because the hidden autonomic nervous system is that which constitutes the arena from which and from where we live. So, here comes the rest of the talk. Right, so this talk is a, is a little piece of the deepest and most profound and the best teaching that you can ever get, that you can ever find in the whole wide world. If you are interested in understanding yourself or if you're interested in um, understanding the human being or if you're inter interested in uh, understanding the world or if you're interested in understanding religion, Buddhism, spirituality, enlightenment, self-realization, all of these things that I've mentioned here now. So this is a talk that you should be listening to if you're not too stuck in your own concepts, if you're not too much a slave <laughs> of your own conditioning in your mind, if you're not too helplessly lost in your own projections, which means that you're attached to them too strongly, you're not able to let them go freely, you're not able to be flexible, to, to exchange, to substitute one concept with another one, because that's not dangerous, that's what we call not only education, but that's what we call the possibility of education, the potential of what education can do with us. All right, <clears throat> so in this talk we're going to talk about that which produces you as a human being. There is something that is producing you as a human being, and that which is producing you as a life in this world, as a human being in this world, is your own nervous system. <clears throat> the nervous system has many parts. And when you are in balance, in uh, homeostasis, you don't feel anything from your nervous system because that is carrying you, that is the raft that is carrying you on the ocean of life. It is the bone in your body, it is the boat between you and the sea. It is simply that which carries you into this world and which holds you as a live human being in this world. If we cut away your nervous system, you would die. <coughs> this is why it is possible for people to be brain dead for a long time and for people to be in coma for a long time. And that's also, this is also the reason why people have near-death experiences, because they actually didn't die completely. The nervous system still carried them. The, the reptile part of the nervous system, or the parasympathetic part, the deepest part of the neuro nervous system, still carried or constitutes, constituted some sort of life in the organism. 
So that's how it is. Well, <clears throat> now we're going to move a little bit to spirituality because in the 21st century, spirituality has a huge renaissance. And that is wonderful. That is completely wonderful. It is truly great because that's what we need because usually people are so uh, arrogant, uh, dishonest, disrespectful, uh, without any self insight, they are not. They are impolite. They are insincere without understanding this themselves. Simply because they're just a machine on two legs, so they don't have self insight. So that's why it is wonderful that spirituality is coming, so that people get self insight. Now we're going to move to the very important part of this lecture that will interest especially gurus, gurus like Muji and uh, Shunyamurti and Rupert Spira, gurus like that. And it will also interest people of knowledge like Yuval Noah Harare. It will also interest yeah, professors, people who are serious when it comes to knowledge. So we'll go straight into it. Why do you think that in a Buddhist temple the monks are sitting together and listening to the tamma why do the monk listen to the tamma teaching the teaching of truth from the buddha or from the master ajan from the master teacher from the abbot or from the most developed tamma teacher in the temple why do you think they are sitting there why do you think that the monks are sitting with the Buddha or with the Tamma or with the Tamma teacher, with Ajahn, with the person of authority when it comes to Buddhist insight and knowledge? <clears throat> well, they sit there because of the nervous system. If, they, if we were not wired in the way that we are, then we would not be in the temple. We are in the temple because of the way that we are wired. We are wired in a way so that the electric circuits in our brains and the chemical reactions in our brains and the electromagnetic activity in our brains, which are all activated by the deeper layers of the nervous system and or kept alive, kept going, kept in activation by the nervous system. If this would was not so, we wouldn't need Jesus or the Buddha or the Christ or uh, Allah. We simply wouldn't need it because we would be Allah, we would be Nirvana, we would be eternal peace. We would simply be it because the nervous system in us is that which appears on the absolute ultimate reality. If we remove the nervous system, we are in paradise. If we remove the nervous system, we are in paradise. So that's why we need mind teachings in order to cultivate how to live with the mind, how to live inside a nervous system that activates our own mind. When you understand this, you understand the human being. When you understand this, then you understand the human program, which I have been talking about now for 15 years. But of course, as you know, as everyone knows, people are not interested in knowledge. They don't actually, people actually don't want to know the truth. They want the illusion. They want a cartoon, same as the born again Christian. They want a cartoon. They not only love the cartoon, of the Christian, the Christian cartoon. They not only love the mythology, the theolo theology, the architecture of the Christian archetype, the, of the divine Christian archetype, and their own position towards it, none the least. They also love their own position towards this archetypal image, uh, towards this archetypal cartoon, so to speak, this language game. They love that because it's the easy way out. It's like shopping, you know, you're going to a supermarket. It, it's very, very easy. But it, unfortunately, uh, uh, in this time, 
at this time we need knowledge, we need self-insight. To simply choose the best cartoon and stick with it in order to save ourselves is simply just not enough. It is understandable that people choose it. Wow, this cartoon really helps me. Jesus has saved my life. I am completely saved by this. For two or three minutes. And then the nervous system comes back again. And then they have to be saved again. If they are honest, they will say that. That, well, being saved is not a constant. Being saved is something that happens in various stages and degrees. Sometimes you're completely saved in paradise. Other times you will get a headache and stress and even feel resentment towards something, you know. So this is all because of the nervous system, because we live inside a machine. We live inside the system of the nervous system. Usually religious people don't like to acknowledge that. And also some of the crazy Buddhists too, they don't want to acknowledge that. The, actually, if the Buddha did not have a nervous system, he would not become a Buddha, because it would not be necessary for him, because he would be in Nirvana already. He developed the Tamma because of the nervous system. The Tamma of the mind, which is Buddhism, is a way to live with the nervous system. That's just how it is. So the enlightenment of the Buddha is not the deepest enlightenment. The thing that I'm saying now is the deepest knowledge. The thing that Buddha would like to hear, he would smile if he heard my talk, because he said, yes, Christian, you've understood it. It's the human condition, it's the nervous system, it's that which constitutes all the mind phenomena that we call samsara, and that which brings us into the wheel of samsara. You know, but many Buddhists, they would not like that, because to them Buddha is the God, the eternal God, same like Jesus, or whatever. Buddha was a teacher. You know, Buddha was a doctor. Buddha was a teacher and a doctor, same as I. I'm a teacher and a doctor. Every person of knowledge is a teacher and a doctor. You know, that's just how it is. Jesus, too, was a teacher and a doctor. But he was crucified because uh, at that time, and especially, you know, Europeans and Jews, they, don't, <laughs> they cannot take truth. You know, they need the cartoon. If something is not a cartoon, they will crucify it because they need the cartoon. If you're blasphemic against the cartoon, same as I am now, they will kill you, they will crucify you, because they love the cartoon, you know. They will crucify anyone, kill anyone who touches the cartoon, same as oppressive regimes in, uh, in toxic countries, you know, in Southeast Asia or other places. Toxic regimes, malignant regimes will kill you if you touch the cartoon. You're not allowed to touch the cartoon. Don't touch the thing that you're not allowed to talk about. And in some countries that are toxic and malignant, you cannot, because the regime is just a self-protective machine, you cannot talk about the cartoon, which is the national propaganda, because if you touch the cartoon of the nationalistic propaganda, you will end up in prison. You will get imprisoned or you will get killed, because the regime don't tolerate that you touch the cartoon of the country. Because the cartoon of the country is <laughs> as valuable as the Buddha himself, you know. So that's how it is in a kindergarten. This world is a kindergarten. This world is a toxic kindergarten full of idiots who cannot control the world, who cannot lead the world because they are not leaders. They don't have authority. They are not good people. They are not good hearts. They are not strong people. They are parasites on culture. And so they come to be a parasite into that which is all about protecting a cartoon with which you can control a country. And that becomes the nationalistic propaganda. You protect the cartoon that can control the country, right? Same with religion. You protect the cartoon that will protect the narrative of God. You will protect the cartoon that will protect the narrative that you believe in. You know, you will protect the cartoon that serves the image, the language game, the theology, the, the cartoon that you serve, that you give yourself to. Jesus would not have become Jesus if he did not have a nervous system, because he wouldn't have to become Jesus if he didn't have a nervous system. Jesus became Jesus because 
of he had a nervous system and he understood quite a lot about it and he saw that other people were suffering in their own life he didn't understand why they suffered because he was not elevated he was not cultivated but he understood spiritual knowledge same as a guru in india today they don't have cultivation true cultivation but they understand yoga and yoga means to to dis detach from that which destroys your mind yoga is only that yoga is the discipline of detaching from that which destroys your mind yoga is the discipline of connecting with your, with the self getting out of the mind and into the self yoga is the discipline of getting out of the nervous system activity so to speak and into the self yoga is about getting out of the ocean and into the single drop that is the paradise in life you know that's what yoga is about and you can do that by refining your ability of your own inner unification energetic unification and spiritual unification and uh, emotional and psychological and mental unification with the deeper inner self this is what yoga is this is what yoga is about any yoga teacher who does not accept that this is relevant it doesn't have to be the final answer if there is a yoga teacher somewhere in this world who does not accept that what i'm saying is relevant for understanding true yoga they are not a yoga teacher they are a gymnast they are a gymnastic teacher they are an aerobics teacher they are a, <laughs> oh, honey 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 let's wriggle our ass and feel good tonight before we go to the swimming pool and do some more exercise which is fine it's no problem but it's not inner essence yoga it's not the discipline of yoga because the discipline of yoga is actually the discipline of yoga is the nervous system version of meditation you could say meditation is that which has to do with mind basically but yoga goes deeper it goes into the nervous system yoga regulates the nervous system this is also why besser van der kolk the trauma expert knows and sees and says that yoga actually helps people who suffer from trauma and he said we don't know why well i can tell you why mr kolk van der kolk it's because yoga regulates the nervous system and that's the only reason why that's the only reason why if you want to improve your life there's only one thing that you should do if you suffer from stress or if you suffer from discomfort or sickness or disease or anything like that you have to regulate your nervous system you have to regulate that which produces your life reality so everything is about how we are wired why is a cat exactly like a cat if you can answer that question you will understand the secret of life why is a cat exactly as a cat because of the the way that the cat is wired it's because of the nervous system inside the cat why is a lion exactly like a lion because of the nervous system because of the way that the lion is wired which is of course controlled by the genetic system you know dna and blah, blah blah all these things but we don't go in this talk we don't go into what it is that decides the nervous system the makeup of the nervous system that has of course something to do with genes and <laughs> dna but and cells but we're not going into that now we're just saying that what is it that is controlling your life what is it that is producing your life well it's your nervous system you don't have to do anything yourself in order to stay alive you don't even have to breathe because your nervous system is going to do that for you you can just lie down close your eyes and drift off into oblivion the nervous system will take care of anything everything you just need water and warmth and some food to survive why do you think people survive on an iv line in the icu hospital for 2 years because of the nervous system you know only that 
So when Shunya Murti has found has found the truth, has found the ultimate of life, he simply has found uh, out uh, an important truth that exists inside the relationship between the nervous system and the mind. That's all, you know. Uh, but he doesn't know that, so he he puts it into the envelope of God and divinity and da da da, which is fine. It's no problem. You can take that cartoon as much as you want, as much as you like. It doesn't matter. It won't change anything. It doesn't. It's not going to produce God. The more you talk about God, it's only going to affect your own nervous system and your brain. And that's why mantras and religion and spirituality is very very beneficial. Because it feeds or it regulates the nervous system, because it influences the nervous system. Everything that you tell yourself, every piece of information that you get into your body affects the nervous system. The, br the gut, the brain in the gut, the microbiome in the gut, what happens when you eat food, when you eat, drink, how about sugar, the hidden secret toxic in this world sugar that kills 20% of the world population without us even knowing it. And me too, I'm a true victim of sugar. Let's talk about addiction. Why are we addicted? Why does addiction exist? Alcoholism, sex addiction, love addiction, shopping addiction, Facebook addiction, internet addiction, food addiction, sugar addiction, chocolate addiction, coffee addiction. Why does these things exist? It's because of the nervous system. It's because, first of all, we try to deal with the effects of the nervous system. We try to deal with the pressure that we're living in, and the pressure is constituted by the nervous system. Sometimes we can feel that pressure, then we are reaching for our addictions. If we cannot feel that pressure, then everything's fine. We don't need to reach for our addictions, for the dessert for the ice cream, for the chocolate, for the coffee, for the glass of wine. We don't have to do that. <clears throat> but, and chemical addiction, sugar addiction is kind of a chemical addiction. Alcoholism is a chemical addiction. Drug addiction is also a chemical addiction. But what is it that drives that chemical addiction? If you didn't have a nervous system, if you did not have a nervous system, it wouldn't matter that your brain had this chemical addiction because it's the nervous system that drives the brain into activating a response to the chemical addiction. Or, I mean, it's the nervous system who instructs the brain to repeat the action of addiction. It's a nervous system that instructs neurochemically and neurocircuitry. Uh, within uh, neurochemicals and neurocircuitry and electromagnetic activity. Um, it's the nervous system that instructs the brain to repeat addictive behavior, addictive responses, addictive activity, you could say. I mean, the repetition of addiction in the brain, the repetition of addiction in the brain happens because of chemical addiction and because of neurological addiction, because of neurocircuitry, because of the programming that the addiction has carved out inside the brain over time. But that simply would not affect us as much if it was not for a nervous system that activated this activity. This activity is activated and strengthened by uh, the power of the hidden, unseen, invisible nervous system. That which powers the brain is the nervous system. The power source of the brain activity is the nervous system. The neurochemical, electromagnetic, and all the activity within neurocircuitry in the brain would not have happened cannot happen by itself as a chemical electromagnetic activity unless it is supported by the nervous system that powers the brain. 
You can have it for 10 minutes, perhaps. That's why people have near-death experiences. And other things, other experiences. But you cannot have it for two hours or three hours. You can have it for four, four or five minutes. Or 10 seconds, or 20 seconds. But uh, when the new, after every part of the nervous system has switched off, after there is, from the point where there is absolutely no electrical charge, where there is absolutely no activity in the nervous system, the brain can be as addicted as it wants. <laughs> it simply doesn't matter because the power of the brain is not there anymore. So the uh, electromagnetic and the neurochemical addictions in the brain will not have that deep an impact. And it will not control your behavior uh, that much. So this is the deepest knowledge that you can ever have about yourself and about the human being and why religion is necessary, why religion is wonderful, why insight is wonderful, why human knowledge, why human education is important. This is a part of the world education, you know. Uh, we should have a, a series, a world series, something like the, the Olympic Games, the Olympic Games, the Olympic Games of world education. You know, we need master teachers. We need a master teachers to come to the world, but the world simply doesn't want it. There's some sincere, good-hearted, pure, heart individuals who want this knowledge, who are able to take it and who loves people of knowledge and insight. But there are so many regimes, whether they are parents or society leaders or business leaders or prime ministers or presidents or kings or queens or emperors or whatever, who simply don't want knowledge because it's not good for the cartoon you know it cracks open the cartoon and all the poison from the corruption and the propaganda machinery is going to leak out they don't want that so people usually don't, they don't want the truth even buddhists they don't want the truth because they want the buddhist cartoon but true buddhism is to let go of the cartoon true buddhism is to find truth without the cartoon. That's what true Buddhism is. True Buddhism is to find truth without the cartoon. When you have, when you are strong enough to have your, to be your own Buddha, when you're strong enough to have the truth inside yourself without the support of any cartoon, that's when, when you have touched the innermost heart of the Buddha. That's when you have completely touched the Buddhist knowledge. That's when you have come into the ultimate reality for one, for one thing. And that's also when you have been the receiver and the experiencer of that, which is the ultimate knowledge. So everything here is about the way that we are wired. We are wired like this, and this is why we need protection from ourselves, from our own minds, from the world, from the outside world. It's because we are wired like this. The fact that the monks are sitting in the temple praying to the Buddha is not only because the Buddha is a god for them, it is because they are living inside a nervous system. If they did not live in, if the monk didn't live inside the nervous system, he wouldn't come in there. The nervous system is the deepest kanda in Buddhist uh, philosophy or in Buddhist knowledge. The body consists of the five kandas, you know, body, emotion, perception, consciousness, emotion. Psychology, blah, blah, never mind, forgive me for my little <laughs> uh, mistake, uh, the reason why I'm not clear, but you know, the five khandas, you know, body, mind, consciousness, perception, emotion, something like that, it's quite close. All right, <clears throat> why does these five khandas exist for us? Because of the nervous system, only that. It's only because of the nervous system, it's because of the way that we are wired. And when the Buddhist understand that, then he will come to see that the nervous system which produces him 
as a person and as a life in this world is that which appears on top of the absolute ultimate reality. And that is the knowledge of the yogi. That is the knowledge of the guru. That is the knowledge of the deep guru, yogi teacher. The nervous system which is producing my life is that which appears on top, so to speak, of ultimate reality. The nervous system that is producing my life and your life is that which appears on top of ultimate reality. And this is nature. This is the truth. This is the whole Shabung, shabang, shabing. This is the truth. That's how it is. The nervous system, which is that which is producing your life, is that which happens, occurs and exists on top of the absolute ultimate reality. The nervous system is the nature that brings nature into existence. The nervous system is that which brings you into existence. And that which brings you into existence is that which exists as a natural layer, as the nature that produces you, as a layer on top of ultimate absolute reality, on that which is hidden. The nervous system is that which appears on that which is prior to consciousness. The nervous system is that which appears on top of that which was prior to the world. The nervous system is that which exists and appears on top of that which has always been. The nervous system is that which appears on top of the eternal. When you connect with and integrate the eternal as a true aspect and part of your own life, then you have spiritual knowledge. Then you have that which leads to self-realization. That's how deep it is. That's how deep it is. If you want this, then this is a way, this is a true paradigm of the whole journey, of the whole thing, of that which is the journey to self-realization and the journey to, to see that which is the cause of anything mental and of anything actually emotional as well and of anything human in society. Why is America a crazy country? Because of the nervous system. Why is Russia a crazy country? Because of the nervous system. Why is China an overactive country? Because of the nervous system. Why is humanity as it is today? Because of the nervous system and because we don't have a teacher, we don't have an authority that we don't have a world that ex accepts to be taught. We don't have a humanity that accepts authority, teachings and knowledge. And that's what we need. We need a humanity that realizes that we need help, we need instructions, we need a guru, we need a teacher, we need something that can make the world right again. We need balance. We need to come back to true reality. If we are able to accept that, then we will see this knowledge that I'm presenting here today. Then we will discover the nervous system and we will also discover the self-realization aspect in us that develops in us, that comes to us when we see that the nervous system is the nature, it's the domain of a of natural phenomena that exists on top of the absolute, of the ultimate reality, on that which came before the nervous system, on that which is prior to the nervous system, on that which is independent from the nervous system, which means space itself, which means nothingness in itself, which means God, which means Parabrahman, you know. This is a model for understanding more of human life. Thank you and Amen. Thank you.